Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Reawakened Mom podcast. And I am here today with an awesome, awesome guest that you are just going to love, Serena Talbot. How are you? I am really good and I'm really excited to yeah. be and have this conversation. Me too. I love these conversations and I always get so lit up after them. And I just know those of you that are listening are just going to feel so great and make sure you listen all the way to the end. Cause I don't even know what we're going to talk about, but I know it's going to be transformational. And like, I feel like always the best part comes like at the very end. I don't know why that yeah. happens, but yeah. make sure you listen to the whole thing. <laughs> Totally. Yeah. Okay. So let me introduce you to my amazing guest. So I want to tell you a little bit about her before we dive in um, and she shares all her goodness with you. But Serena is a trauma-informed transformational coach. Her work focuses on inner healing, intuition, mindset, and taking the next step in your life confidently. Mm, I just love that. Bringing you scientifically proven techniques, get your subconscious on board so you have 100% of your mind working with you and for you, no longer working against you. That sounds amazing. This allows you to rapidly overcome self-doubt, sabotage, anxiety about the future to create a kick-ass life you love. Oh my gosh, that's so amazing. <laughs> welcome, 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 welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All so of that. Yeah, all of that. Like, I, that's like <laughs> no big deal. Ever. It's all the things. So we will have actually a two hour podcast episode right now because we cannot get through all that in half an hour. I can just guarantee mm -hmm. it. <laughs> but tell our, tell our listeners that don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself, wherever you want to start. Do you want to talk about family, yourself, your past? Like, where do you want to start? Let us get to know you a little bit before we dive into all your goodness that you work with women on. Awesome. Well, I think the thing, you know, when we were talking about like having a conversation with moms, you know, and all of like being a mother and I have four kids. So ages 14, 17, 19, and almost 21, 21 next week. Oh. Um, and with all of the, you know, the work that I do with the subconscious and the things we're programmed with and overcoming trauma and, and all of these things, I think motherhood is like this crucible of like, that's for me has been the biggest motivator to heal. Like mm -hmm. if I didn't have kids showing me, like mirroring back my behavior and like yeah. scared I was going to pass on stuff to them, you know, I wouldn't have done the work, but in all of that, you know, the more we heal, the more we learn, the more we learn about our mind, the more we learn about our subconscious, it takes away shame and it takes away like guilt. And, and that's just something that I'm really passionate about because I think moms, as moms, we walk around with a lot of blaming ourselves for things and wishing we had done things differently and not knowing how to do things differently or finding out too late and all these things. So I'm just really passionate about that. But what brought me to the work was, I mean, that wanting to be a better human for my children. Yeah. But, um, I ran a homeless shelter for five years and burned out, um, just doing too much, always on call, always working and really motivated through that to prove my worth. Like if I just do this thing, if I just succeed at this thing, if I just succeed at this business, I'll be good enough, you know, and it'll be official, you know, and we do that. Sometimes we do that through losing weight or getting a certain amount of money or, you know, getting in the right relationship, but I did it in a business mm. and through that learned through it failing, right. Had this moment when it didn't work out the way I planned. I didn't get all my self-worth from it. And it was wrecking my life, wrecking my health, wrecking my relationships and my kids, you know, taking away from them. Yeah. Um, after it closed, it was this huge learning you know, learning opportunity to be reflecting and be like, okay, I'm the common denominator. What in me did this like, and really since it didn't work out the way I wanted feeling worse than I ever had and having to figure out how do you really get your work? How yeah. do you really feel valuable? Like my big scheme didn't work. So how does this actually work? <laughs> you know, like how do you actually do this and learning that, you know, and when I talk about a kick-ass life, it's not like killing it in every different direction. It's like what our heart wants for a kick-ass life. I want time with my kids. I want rest. I want balance. Yeah. And, and in order to create that, you can't be at the same time 
chasing and striving, right? So figuring all of that out. And for me, learning, I'm valuable when I'm doing nothing. I'm valuable just because I'm here. But that process took learning and understanding, you know, why I ended up there, like why I ended up needing so bad to feel valuable because I didn't feel that inside. I felt worthless inside. And so I learned about trauma and I learned about, you know, my past and the things that had happened to me. And I, I went to traditional therapy and books and, you know, I learned so much about like kind of why I was screwed up. And I was like, that's awesome. (laughs) But then I wanted to change, right. I wanted to change behaviors. I wanted to change how I was thinking. I wanted to change these patterns that I had. And that's when I really dug into, bumped into, found out about the subconscious neuroscience, how our brains work and how our brains can change. And that's what led me to the rapid transformational therapy that I studied in and really understanding that no matter what our past programming. And for me, it was a lot of things um, with trauma that would say, I shouldn't be where I'm at. You know, a lot of things that happened that you don't come back from, or you don't change from or whatever. And understanding that I could and that it was possible and working with that. When I talk about getting a hundred percent of your mind working for you, our subconscious, where we hold our patterns, where we hold trauma, where we hold past pain, where we hold fears and, you know, the things that mess us up. Yeah. It's scientists say it's a million times more powerful than our conscious mind. But most of the time when we try to change, we don't even touch it. We don't go there. We don't know it. We don't, you know, do the healing work we could do there and access that power. We try to change with our conscious, which is a million times weaker. And so a lot of times people are frustrated because they're trying to change and trying to change and they're not accomplishing anything. So that's the main thing I learned is that it was great to know why I was messed up, but it was even better to know I can change. Yeah. So tell us about how that process went for you then. And tell us if you could, because I don't know if everyone listening, they're like, wait, I have two minds. Like, what do you mean? I have a yeah. conscious and then a subconscious and an unconscious. Like, tell us a little bit about mm-hmm. what you mean by that subconscious mind, because I don't know if a lot of moms or women that are listening would even, that may be the first time that they've heard that before. Yeah. Awesome. And it it's, it's kind of when you think about the things you do, when I think about the subconscious mind is things I do that I'm not aware of on autopilot, or it's the things I do that I don't want to do. I'm like, I shouldn't be doing this. Why am I doing this? Like something happens with my family or in a relationship or something. And I instantly am like super angry or super shut down, or I just want to run away. And my logical mind knows I need to stay. I am loved. I am <laughs> like, yeah, this is safe, but there's this other part of you. And I think everybody can relate to that. That's reacting yeah. in this way that you're like, this doesn't make sense. And I don't understand this. And logically, this shouldn't be here. Like logically, I shouldn't be afraid. Logically, I shouldn't be this upset right now. Logically, I should know I'm valuable when someone didn't invite me to something, right? So our logic mind knows, and I think of this with like affirmations, like I'm valuable, I'm worthy, I am loved, but something kicks in. It's like, uh uh-uh, no, you're not. Everybody hates you and you're gonna die. Yeah, (laughs) oh my goodness. And that's the the subconscious for better or for worse, you know? And it's, it's those, it's programmed before age seven. So this is a thing. If you imagine a computer program and we want to, we want to program it with a tree, right? So I'm going to put like five pictures of trees into this program. And that's all that's available there. And so anytime for the rest of your life, when you type in tree, those are the ones that come up. And so how this relates to us relationally is like, we're plugging in, am I valuable? Am I safe? Am I taken care of? And whatever you experienced when you were younger is your data. And you take it forward. That program runs until we interrupt it. And so when we have reactions that our logical mind knows this emotion is much bigger than this situation requires, or I'm hiding and I, and I know I don't need to hide. I have this vision on it for my life, or I'm, I'm reacting in fear or anger to my kids. And I don't want to, I want to be calmly having this conversation. Then there's just something in that program that's going against 
what you want to have happen. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. How do you, so how do you get out of that vicious cycle? Cause it is a cycle. Cause, and it's like, you yeah. know, you're talking about every day of my life. I'm like, Oh crap. I was she-hawk again today. And I tried not to be she-hawk, but I got mm-hmm. angry mm-hmm. at like the blank of a hat, you know, or like yes. I just looked at me and I, you know, got angry or whatever happens. Like how, how do you get past that? Like, how do you work through that? Like, because it is, it seems so like you try every day, like I'm going to try and do better. Like I'm doing the best I can, like all of these things, the shame, the trauma, like I'm, you know, things that you don't, you don't want to harm your kids. You don't want to hurt your kids with things that you're saying they're doing. Like you don't want to intentionally cause trauma, like in their lives and thinking, wait, something happened to me. Like before I was seven, that is potentially like causing me to react this way. Like it seems crazy. So how, where do you start? Like, do you dig all that up? Like when you work with moms or work with women or people? Mm -hmm. First, I need to ask about She-Hawk. Okay. I love it. So I w- I'm a big, like Marvel. We're a big Marvel yes. family over yes. here. And so it was just like this persona of like, you know, like Hawk when Hawk gets angry and like rips yes. off his clothes and gets all big and loud. Yes. Like that is where, what I feel like sometimes that I'm like the, the she version of like she Hawk, where it's just like, you get angry and you burst out, whatever happens. I don't typically throw things or destroy things. Like I don't do that, but it's more of that like persona of like, I got big and angry and I don't turn green, but it's just like this persona of like, yeah, I got upset and raged when I didn't want to. Yeah. I love it. So the biggest thing, and I'm assuming you've already done this as well, is becoming aware. Like instead of letting She-Hulk just run the show, you you get more and more aware of like, oh, this happens. You know, you start to notice and have, um, you know, I, I really think get curious about it. So the reason, the reason something like a She-Hulk, which I love so much for me, it's, I don't know if we can swear here, but like mine's yes, like please. big You're bad so- bitch. Like okay. that's you know what I've named mine. <laughs> But so what happens, you know, and this is the thing, it's really understanding the subconscious. So I'll just, you know, share a bit about it is before age seven, we're completely dependent on the people around us, you know, to keep us safe and to teach us what things are relationships. And, you know, am I safe to speak up? Am I safe to have an opinion? Am I safe to share, you know, how I feel? Am I safe to say, I don't like something. Right. And for most of us, especially as women, we need to be nice and quiet. And, Mm -hmm. and so we have opinions you know, we, we, we learn to be quiet and nice and sweet, but those opinions are still there. Yeah. And those, you know, needs are still there. And so we get this part of us that's going to defend us or going to show up and going to be like, okay, enough is enough. Melissa needs the Hulk. We're coming, yeah. in. we're coming <laughs> in about this situation, you know, and we get these, we, these parts that when we're younger come in to protect us. Because maybe we we can't speak up unless we're angry or we can't speak up unless, you know, we quote unquote are crazy or, mm-hmm. or do, yeah. you know, these things. And so we get those patterns. And for all of us, we have different flavors of our own patterns about this. But the major key is just knowing this, just knowing this gives you the ability to start reflecting on it. But the main thing is to know when that anger comes up or when we have the outburst or when for me, I might be naggy or I say I'm bitchy. Mm -hmm. It's to go, okay, what's underneath what's going on instead of the shame. Oh, I need to stop that behavior. I shouldn't do that. That's bad. You, you learn it and you get curious about it and you begin to learn what your, what's causing it, what's underneath, you know? And I love the idea of Hulk in the Marvel because there are so many times that was absolutely necessary and absolutely good, you know, <laughs> like in the one movie where he doesn't, he's like needed to turn into the Hulk and he yeah. can't, you yeah. know, and so you figure out how's it serving me. Mm-hmm. And again, why do we get something like a Hulk? Because we're little. And so then you bring it into your adult life and you go, okay, this is a little too much, but what's good here? What does, what does this She-Hulk help me accomplish? What does Big Bad Bitch help me accomplish? And for me, it's speaking up. It's saying when something is unfair. It's per- feeling protective if I'm scared of something. So what I learned to do and what all of us can learn to do when we look at those parts is go, okay, can I speak up a different way? Mm. Could I communicate a different way? Could I tell somebody I'm scared? 
instead of just flipping out? Yeah. Could I do something proactively? If this isn't fair, could I set a boundary? So it's hanging out with all of that instead of beating ourselves up about it. If that's the main thing you can do yeah. is, is take away any like, oh, I need to be quiet. Oh, I should be sweeter. Oh, I shouldn't do this. Mm. And so, because I'm thinking, and because maybe the moms are thinking that, yeah. you know, you have kids, so you know, this, this life, like, I don't have time to do that. Like I am on the go. So what do you mean? Like, I'm supposed to sit back and reflect. I'm supposed to think about yeah. that. Like, how do you do this? Do you teach women? And I'm we're just gonna talk about moms. because yeah. That's what it is for. Yes, like, do absolutely. you teach moms to do that? Like in the moment, or is it like, bef- like, how do we find the time Serena to do this? Because yeah. I have no time. Like we were just talking, I have no time. I'm so busy. I'm running the kids everywhere. Like I got to make dinner. I got like, I can't sit and reflect about myself. Like what, you know, it's my kid's fault. You know, like how, how do you teach moms to do what the work that you're talking about when we already feel overwhelmed enough? I think like for me, and I think for a lot of moms, we don't prioritize it until it's bad. Yeah. (laughs) That's what happened to me. Like I was running, 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 running away from it and blaming other people. And I was way too busy until it all crashed. And then I had time. So I encourage people who are like, I'm too busy to do this emotional work. Like, oh my gosh, you know, and I'm like, well, we have options. We can wait till everything falls apart or you can begin to do this now. But I think it's the understanding. This is this is the most important work you can be doing. Yeah. And, and I think for women, what I see over and over and over is that when moms choose to do this work, it changes the atmosphere. Like we are so powerful when we do this work, it changes the atmosphere of our family and to prioritize it, whatever that looks like. If somebody is like how I was like completely burned out and like, I could not dig myself out. I needed help. I needed support. I needed to reach out and find people to help me through that. But if it's not, you know, if it's not that bad at this moment and you're just like, okay, I'm noticing patterns and that kind of thing, it's knowing 15 minutes a day is gonna be really powerful. And here's the beauty about kids, it's Groundhog's Day. They are gonna (laughs) knock it up for school tomorrow. And then they're not gonna get up for school the next day. And then they're gonna be rude at the dinner table next week and then the next day. So we get opportunities every single day. I think that's an important thing to know. Like life is helping you out with this process. Like life is teaching you. This relationship with the kids is teaching you. You don't have to go above and beyond. It's right in front of your eyeballs every single day. So it's bringing that awareness into those moments. Yeah. And and what I say is we have awareness uh, before, during, and after. So you start out and it's after you're like, oh my gosh, I just like, what I used to do is just make everybody cry. Like once a month, the whole house, like just freak out on all my girls and everybody was crying. And then I would go in my room and cry and you, you notice a pattern. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Huh. How could we do that differently? (laughs) Yeah. You know? And so life is giving you these amazing children that they push your buttons and they trigger you and they scare you. And like, there are no lack of these opportunities, you know, to do this, but it is, it is the choice to bring that awareness in. And instead of, so here's the thing, when we go through the motions, right, you're, you're, you're just going through the emotions. You're not, or going through the motions. It's bringing this idea of, okay, being present, pausing, like really thinking about things. And that's a different way of living, yeah. right? Instead of just like this thing, okay, now on to the next thing, now on to the next thing with my schedule. Now we're doing the next thing. And I think at the end of the day, none of us really want to live like that. So it's this, it's this invitation, hopefully listening to this conversation, like if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling like you're just going through the motions, if you're feeling like you just go from one thing to the next to the next, you need to do this the most. Yeah. And it can be five minutes a day. It can be, you know, just shifting how you're looking at things. For some people, it it requires you reach out for help, you know, in some capacity. Um, but to me, it's the most important work that we can do, but we don't really make space for it in our lives for the most part. 
Yeah. I would love to know, especially because, so I am in, um, do you have all girls or all four girls? I have all four girls. Okay. So I'm completely opposite. So I have all boys. So I have yes. a 13 year old. He's all, he's going to be 14 next month. Um, a 16 year old. And then I have a 30 year old bonus son. So it has been me and all my boys forever. Um, so love that. I have four brothers now. growing opposite. up. Yeah. Opposite that way. But I would love to know because um, I've been talking a lot about the teenage years and how I feel that the teenage years are so much harder to yes. myself than they than ever I thought. Like I thought once I got past the toddler phase, this motherhood thing is so good because yeah. we don't talk about at the time anyway, because obviously I was living with the younger kids, like the teenage years. So now that you have older kids, so like almost a 21 year old, and then you're in the teenage phase, like this is where like, I'm kind of living right now. Yes. And so much. Um, I feel like as a mom, that separation of like, wait, yes. you needed me for so long and I was your buddy and we did everything together. And, you know, especially with, since I stayed at home with my kids and worked from home, we were together so much. And now that there's this separation, like, I feel like there's so many strings that I'm trying to grasp onto yes. to be like, wait a second, like you still are my baby. Wait a second. You're still here. Wait a second. Don't you still need me? Don't you want to do something with me? So there is so much that I'm going through in motherhood in this teenage phase of like being able to release, but still be attached mm -hmm. where I'm like, wow, it is like the craziest mind fuck in the world. I will tell yeah. you like this, it is yeah. like, this is a big transition and it's not even, I'm not even an empty nester yet. I'm just like, what is happening? Oh my gosh. I love it so much. I love that you said it's a mind fuck. I call it a scam. I'm like, who invented motherhood? <laughs> This baby who completely depends on you to live right in the yeah. womb and for however many years, even till they're two, can't even eat, completely yeah. dependent on you. You would die for them in a heartbeat. And then they gradually get, so they think you're an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> basically. And they trigger you constantly and then they leave. And, you, you know, it's, a, it's so interesting. Um, and I don't, so what I think happens or what, what I experience happening. And when I look at other women is a lot of shame comes into those years and we, and the kids maybe are, you know, not doing as well in school. And so we think I'm a bad mom, or they might be doing a behavior that's not alignment with our values. And we think I'm a bad mom. And instead of like sharing it, which I love that we are having this conversation right now, we kind of like pull back and think every other mom's doing this thing. Awesome. Yeah. And it's just our kids. And yeah. it's just us struggling with this stuff and to know, like, it's really normal. The other thing psychologically and subconsciously that's happening. Well, there's a lot. Yeah, you know, I know. Kid, they're going from a kid to an adult. That's a big job. Yeah. Like for my girls, 13 was a hard, hard year for all of us. There was one woman who told me she's like the hardest time in a woman's life is when she's 13 and when her daughter's 13. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if kids have, if boys have a different, um, situation, but, um, we, we need to know that, like, we need to know that it's hard. And for me, um, the, the two things that are happening is for your child, they're going from child to adult and biologically, there's this thing that happens where if you think about it, if a kid was smart, they would live with their parents forever. <laughs> so biologically the design was, they would leave the home. So in order for them to have the audacity to think they can do this thing better than us and leave our home, <laughs> like all these hormones kick in and the kids think that we're idiots, but that's by design so that they would leave. Yeah. Because if they didn't do that, why, why would they ever leave? So there's this thing that happens yeah. in them where they're like, I can do it better. What they're also doing is sorting through, they're, they're kind of looking at all of your values. Like they're on a table, you know, like a buffet and they're deciding what are my values? What would I like? Which ones do I not want? And that's really hard because yeah. your kid's old enough to look at you as a flawed human <laughs> instead of like the great human when they were six and you were magical, yeah. you know? And so if we haven't made peace with different parts of us, oh, it's so hard. And yeah. I didn't like the other thing that's happening for us is that when your child is 13, there's part of you remembering when you were 13. When your child's 15, there's part of you reliving when you were 15. And if you had any trauma in your own life at those ages, 
it's going to come up. And if it hasn't been dealt with, you, it's an invitation. I think it's a beautiful way life is working to heal yeah. us, yeah. but it feels horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, when I was 15, I just, you know, I had, I had trauma when I was younger and we use the word trauma and, you know, you can, everybody assigns their different things to it. Yeah. But I was, I was, a, my dad was an alcoholic and abusive when I was little, but a lot of the times that means a, a girls will be, you know, sexually active early. So I got pregnant and had an abortion was that when I was 15. So when my oldest, and that was traumatic for me. And, um, when my oldest was 15, mm -hmm. I was absurdly paranoid that she was going to get pregnant and it didn't, it was subconscious, right? It didn't make sense. My logical brain was like, she's probably fine. She's a healthy kid. She's happy. She's not me. She's not doing the things I did, but subconsciously it was just this fear. And so I was like, trying to like grab on and control her. Yeah. Like you're talking about that letting go and we have to do this work if we're going to be able to let these kids go. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. But it is so true because I think, and I don't know, I'm not speaking for all the moms out there, but like, I feel like this is like a new generation of like women talking about things where so yeah. many for so long, like things just weren't talked about. Like we don't talk about that. We don't talk about our period. We don't talk about sex. Like we don't talk about our bodies. Like, and now there's all of this new generation of like people talking about it and people talking about trauma and people talking about mindset and people talking about, you can change things and people talking about things that just opening up a lot more for all of us that I feel like maybe was never there before or just was not talked about and especially as a generation of like women since we are women you know like how women were treated previously versus like us and that generational change and what we want to have like for your daughters and what I want for my sons and how I want them to treat women um you know it's just changed so much so I just feel like we're just like this whole reawakening of like us and women and how we want to do things and how we don't have to do things the way like our parents did or our mother did. And I just think it is beautiful, but it doesn't make it any easier, right. you know, like, and I think it's also that trusting yourself and knowing yourself and knowing that you don't have to do things like other people did and giving yourself that permission. But I think doing that work is really, really important. And it's very, very difficult. It's very yeah. difficult, but it's beautiful. And and it is beautiful. And I think of it, like, I think of it as like ROI, like return on your investment. Mm -hmm. When I'm in something hard, I'm like, this is worth it. Like, this is worth it. What's on the other side is, you know, and we have that contrast. Like we don't want to do things the way our grandparents did and the way our parents did. Right. And we yeah. want to have something different. It's like, if I can do this, this work and change things, it's, it's worth it. But yeah. I think that's the main the main difference between people that end up with, you know, healthier relationships with their kids or not is if they're willing to do the work because it's scary mm -hmm. and it's hard. And yeah. if you can just know that it's, that it's always worth it. I think the thing for me that I'm, you know, my soapbox is you can change. It is worth it. Keep going. Don't quit because we can get discouraged. Yeah. We can be like, is this even working? Yeah. You know, and, because we know we can't change other people. Like we yeah. can't, we can influence, right. but like it has to start with us. So like you can't change necessarily like your kids or you can't change right. your spouse or you can't change right. things. But like, if you start working on yourself, like you said earlier, like we are powerful beings. And like, yeah. if, you know, I hate this, but like, if mama's not happy, nobody's happy. Like, I hate that honestly, but like, yeah. it's true because we are very powerful and we yeah. are looked at the most time. I feel like in our kids' eyes is like this woman, she does all these amazing things. Or maybe that's what I think my kids think of me, <laughs> maybe, but, um, I just think it's beautiful. And I think we just need to give ourselves that permission to also know that it doesn't have to be perfect. Like, I feel like I'm, I do apologize to my kids. I'm yes. like, shit like I really effed up like yes. I'm really sorry and I know I'm apologizing again but yeah. I'm doing the best I can and I'm I'm working on it and I'm trying and I just want to give my kids permission to know that like they don't have to yes. be perfect you know like when they become a parent yeah. at some point if they ever choose to have kids or when they get married or whatever they get a job like I'm trying to give them permission to know like 
they can shift. They can change. Like they aren't going to be perfect. Life isn't always perfect. Like it's never perfect. And whatever you're seeing on social or everywhere else, like that's just part of a story, but it isn't the whole piece of it. Um, so just trying to be that good influence for, for my kids and help them with their mindset. Cause that's what I do always try to work with them on mindset. Cause I think that is so powerful, especially with kids in sports. Like that's kind of where it started for me was that like mindset piece of seeing like, oh my God, like you can tell when a kid's body language, like you're done. Like I can already tell, like you're going to strike out. Like I can yeah. see it. <laughs> it's oh, there's so, there's so many good things there because here's the thing we can be doing the exact right things as a mom, like apologizing, modeling, showing, encouraging, and we're not getting good feedback from this 14 year old. We could be the perfect mm -hmm. mom, like the most loving, the best. And the 14 year old by design thinks we're an idiot. Yeah. So it's a really hard thing. Cause if I go to a corporate job and I do an amazing job, I'm going to get a great review and I might get a bonus and I might get yeah. ready. But if I'm an amazing mom to a teenager, I'm, it's probably going to actually look worse. Yeah. Right. They actually might be more mad at me if I'm doing it right. Yeah. And that's what you're talking about. Like that's the mind fuck because we don't find out till later until they have kids and they're like, Oh, okay. Thanks yeah. mom. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so the other thing is what's coming to mind is Glennon Doyle talking about like the power of women talking mm -hmm. and talking about this stuff and sharing their experience and being vulnerable and sharing like, this is hard. It's hard for me too. Like I know all this stuff and it's hard. And I apologize to my kids and my 17 year old goes to therapy with somebody else, you know, cause she's not going to talk to me. No, <laughs> I'm okay with that. And I'm so happy about that. I'm like, that's support. That's support yeah. for our family. I'm not ashamed of it. I used to be completely ashamed of that, you know, and think that that meant I was a bad mom. And now I'm like, oh, that means I'm a good mom. My kids open to therapy. Yeah. So it's like changing these things because other people have talked about it and made it a possibility. And I think what I would encourage any woman to do who feels alone is take a risk to share with another woman, another mom. And if you get shame or judgment anyway, run for the hills. Mm -hmm. But I believe you'll find people who support you and love you. And I, once my girls turned like 12 and 13 and they didn't, they started not liking me before that, like, that's all I hung out with. I had four girls. I was home with them and my like, friends were Best like, friends. these are my people. Let's go to the yeah. zoo. And yeah. then they got older and they didn't like me as much. And I'm like, oh, I need women friends. And I started investing in women relationship with a whole different conversation yeah. because yeah. you need to find your people, you know, with similar values that aren't judging you and whatever. But that was a really important thing for me to do because also then you talk about these patterns and you notice they're not just you yeah. these patterns that are happening or if you do have a specific thing from your past that's coming up and really upsetting you you have someone who will listen to you and support you but who's also maybe not having that experience so that you can see how maybe it could be done differently yeah I don't know like community is really important and yeah. again if all of this sounds overwhelming. Like you, you reach out and it's the most important thing for us yeah. to get that support as moms. We do so much. And then we feel bad that we can't do it all alone. Mm -hmm. And that's crazy. Yeah. We can't do it all. yeah. Yeah. That is like, yeah, that is like my number one thing. Like you do not have to do it all because I've been in that situation where you are, where it's trying to do all the things yeah. and be all the things and be the yes person and make everyone happy. And I was not making myself happy. Like I was the one mm -hmm. that was struggling, um, silently, you know, cause I looked perfect from the outside, whatever perfect is, but, um, it looked great from the outside to everyone else. And then that's when it was like, Oh, wow. Wait a second. Like, I'm hurting myself here. Like I am doing great things for other people, but like, what about me? And what we need to, about me? We need to redefine perfect because to me, a mom that's a hot mess and saying sorry and learning and growing is perfect. Yeah. To me, it's perfect. And yeah. for your kids to see that is perfect. And then it's funny. We try to do all the things and all the, all the different times I've like been like, I quit. Like I'm not doing the dishes all the time or I'm not doing the laundry all the time. You guys do it. And then maybe the house is more messy and I think the whole world's going to fall apart and like, nobody cares. Yeah. And I get a break. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Look perfect. Yeah. If I can, you know, be okay with that. So much of the things we're doing when we stop doing, like 
Nobody even notices. Nobody even notices. I know, right? We're just putting it on ourselves. Yeah. So redefining perfect, I think is a a really important thing because to me, that's, that's perfect. And it's perfect that our kids see we can love ourselves or, you know, have good friends be doing this life and be messing up and still be, you're still doing your podcast. You're still doing your business. You're still serving the world. Yeah. And you're not perfect. And not all of us. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So like I said, well, we couldn't make it this a two hour podcast, but like, we know all the moms listening, <laughs> like you got things going on ladies, but is there anything that you haven't shared or that you feel is really on your heart that you just want to get this message out um, to the mamas that are listening? Yeah, I really believe life is leading us like to the healing we want, to the relationships with our kids that we want, to all of the things that we want. And so the two things are no, like this work works. Don't give up. Our brains can change. Our patterns can change. These relationships with our kids can change. Even I work with people and the kids are out of the home and they and they feel like it's too late. But when mom invests in herself, whatever that looks like, it changes those dynamics. Yeah. Not that you, you like you said, it's like if mom's not happy, nobody's happy. But if mom starts to be really happy, if mom finds peace, if mom does that work, everybody gets right. That's the flip side of it. It gets yeah. to change things. And the next is, I also believe life leads you to bump into books, podcasts like this, information, resources, coaches that, that show up when you need them Mm -hmm. and to give yourself the time, the, the investment of doing that, if that's where you're at. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Um, okay. So here's my last question. Cause I said, okay. where we started recording, I was like, yeah. there is no script here. Like I don't have like, this is great questions, but this is the last one that I always love to ask because we've talked about this so much already in the podcast. Like we, as women, we don't celebrate ourselves enough. We don't, you know, look at ourselves enough. We don't give ourselves enough time to really be like, Oh, you did that. That's amazing. Good for you. I'm proud of you. High five. But I would love to know what is something that you love about yourself right now in this moment? So to go back to she Hulk and my (laughs) big bad bitch, you have been liking that part of me, like embracing it more. Like I do get to have a voice and I do get to not always be nice. And in that, allow so it's been this really big healing process really in the last year of allowing myself to want things and allowing myself to go after them and speak up when something doesn't feel good Mm -hmm. and be okay with some people maybe not liking that and knowing like as I embrace speaking up that it's the exact right thing. It doesn't actually mean I'm a bitch at all. Mm-hmm. Like it means I'm just moving in the direction that I know is right for me and trusting my intuition. And like, and I don't know if it's because I'm 41 and you know, you stop, they all say, everybody says you stop caring what people think so much, which is glorious, but it's like when, so what does that mean? If I don't care what people think so much, I'm okay with maybe not making everybody happy. Yeah. And following my vision and the thing I want to do. So that's also hard, but it's been really cool. Like I feel really good when I trust myself, when I'm like, this is where I'm supposed to be. Instead of how do I manage everybody else? And they're all happy. And then I'll try to do what I want in the middle of all of that. Like that's getting old. Yeah. Oh, (laughs) a bit older. Love that. Oh, I love that you love that about yourself. Yeah. Way to recognize my friend. How can people find you? Because I'm sure they're going to want to follow you or connect. And I will put this in the show notes. So, um, but is there a good spot for people to go and find out a little bit more about you? So, yeah, you may have to look in the show notes because everything is my name, which is spelled funny. So it's Serena, C Y R I N A Talbot. So it's Serena Talbot on Instagram, serenatalbot.com and Facebook. Those are the main places. And it's the Mindset Transformation Company. You can also find it there. Awesome. Cool, my friend. Thank you so much for sharing and having this genuine conversation with me 
um, on motherhood and um, being vulnerable and just sharing and being open from your heart. I know that the moms that are listening are just going to love this conversation. Good. I love it. And thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Bye, my friend. Bye.